Greetings, everybody. Welcome to our first episode of One Degree of Scandalous. I'm Tom to Zenner, here. along with... I talked over your name because I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. Cato Kalen, Tom Zenner. Yeah. Is this great? Cato, I'm so excited. We came up with this idea, what, six months ago? Eight yeah. months ago? Yeah. Actually, the first conversation we had was probably two years ago, before the pandemic, about doing this. And, and here we are. I mean, good things take a long time to, to be put into place, but I want to thank Podcast One for giving us the opportunity. And this is going to be the first of, I think, a lot of episodes because, as you know, Cato, we can't get enough of scandal, no, right? I, I mean, your whole life has been surrounded by it and evolved from one, the biggest one ever, but it, it, it hasn't faded one bit. No, I, I'll tell you what. When you first uh, said uh, I have the show called One Degree of Scandalous, I said, what a genius title. I mean, you just get it. Yeah. And, you know, and being involved in a scandal or, you know, I guess people assumed it was a scandal. I was the uh, first time ever. Uh, we're talking about the OJ trial, right? Yeah. Not my parking tickets. <laughs> right? that's a big difference. No, that, that's, so, a, that's a pending case. We can't talk about yeah, that. Yeah. I, no more parking tickets for me because I, <laughs> I took off my wiper blades. So it's like a given now. I don't get any more tickets. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I went into uh, uh, the OJ Simpson trial, a scandal. Never, ever in my life, ever being in a courtroom, ever in my uh-huh. life, and the first time in a courtroom, I'm in with a double homicide. And, uh, and with the whole world watching, with by the, the way. With the world yeah. watching. And, yeah. you know, you don't know the world's watching and, uh, until I did my, uh, uh, my first day when I walked down a hallway and they didn't know who I was. And then I walked out of the hallway where every reporter was screaming Cato. Yeah. And it was like, wow, power of the media. media. And you think about that. That was 1995 the nine month trial. And that was probably the last time you walked down a hallway where somebody didn't know who you were. I mean, literally, yeah. I mean, you've had 27 years of this, you know, so our podcast, I'm going to just explain real quickly. Cato and I are going to relive famous scandals, number one. Okay. Because they're still fascinating. And we have, and there's, I came up with at least 200 that we're going to cover and we have the today? ability. I've been in the all 200 today. Uh, you know what? We might take a little break. We'll oh, do one at a time. Cause I have to be in a <laughs> Sorry. The bowling alley. Right. He's still on his honeymoon. We're going to get to that too, by the way. But <laughs> I, what this show is about, and thank you so much for tuning in. And you know, I've been in the media business for a long time, 25 plus years, uh, television, publishing. I've written over 40 books, magazines. Wow. I've done a lot, but I don't think I've ever been more excited about one thing I've done than this. And it's mainly because of you, Cato, and, and the combination that we're going to bring to this show and, and just the ability to talk about these past scandals and the ones that are in the news. So that's what we're going to be doing. The one degree is we're connected to everybody that's been involved in a scandal. So we're going to get those people on the show. We're going to talk about Johnny Depp, that trial today. We're going to have a great guest today, a writer for People Magazine Wow, with some I, incredible you, behind the scenes of uh, Info from from the Depp trial. You know, and it's it's uh, that's the the best part about it because when you think scandal, you, you think entertainment, and you think, okay, well, how's this scandal going to affect me? Well, we're going to find out how many people actually are affected by watching Johnny Depp, Amber Heard, and they take their sides. Mm-hmm. I was in this trial. I became a, a a character like from a soap opera. No one associated me as a real human being. Yeah. They were like, that's Cato the character, mm-hmm. and it's it's amazing that you your whole life is put out. Your your public figure, your entire life. Yeah. It's put out into, uh, like I said, 95, and it was 94, 95, 96, actually. Mm-hmm. You're, uh, uh, this is kind of before the Twitter and that thing. thing it's, a, it's a double-edged sword with that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could have made tons of cash if I would have done the, uh, you know, sort sure. of the Kardashian thing and right. become very famous. Uh, it was famous, but that was You didn't monetize it to, to the yeah. level that people could do it right now yeah. because of scandal. And, you know, we talk about scandal, and we talk about Cato being involved in it, and you didn't make that choice to be involved in a scandal. Yeah. And it wasn't really a scandal. That was your life. I mean, that was Monday through Friday, 24-7, every single minute. And, you know, that's one of the things, too, is just getting your perspective and having you here. And and we're going to talk a lot about that because people are still fascinated. You know, I wrote in our bio, you know, just the strange connection with the OJ thing that we obviously you have. And even me, when I played football in college (laughs) in June, I played uh, football here in California, at the University of Pacific. Um, but before that, I was in junior college. And when I was in junior college, I broke the all-time touchdown record for junior college. And it still stands. I'm not trying to brag about that. But OJ had the record. And I still have it, by the way. No one's broken it in the past 20-some years that I've had it. But OJ called me. There was a big story in the USA Today. You haven't and, killed anybody. Uh, no, no. no I, right, I don't. Clean record. Clean record. Fewer parking tickets than you probably, by the way. <laughs> and then I was in the Marsha Clark ABC show. That she did a couple years ago, that primetime show, The Fix. I played a TV reporter in that, too. So it's funny. Wow. I think fate has brought us together. I, I, I think so, too. And I think it's, uh, you know, everybody talks about the Kevin Bacon six degrees. I think the one degree is, is it nails it even better. Because the one degree is uh, how close you are to, you know, you work the Marshall Clark 
connected to me. You did that the the OJ record you're talking about. I think that one degree. It's it's fascinating, Tom. I got to tell you the uh, still to this day, 27 years later people will come up to me everybody wants to be connected they all have an oj story they all have a nicole story they all have something they want they they want to be associated to this thing i and i don't know why yeah. but they want to feel like they're part of it yeah and i think we're finding that out now and, and by the way i get a phone call probably every day other day when there's a huge scandal involved to do a sit down from a CNN to a Fox News to an MSNBC, I've been getting inundated with calls about the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial, and I I don't want to do I want to do it here, but I don't want I it's not right you know, it's not uh, what I want to do I'm uh, I have other things that are sort of on my plate and uh, uh, but you know when OJ the they had the uh, one uh, seventeen Emmy nominations one eight Emmys was the um, uh, Ryan Murphy show that was on FX. Yeah, the, so the docudrama series that was fantastic. They, by the they way, they had in 2016. The New York yeah. Daily News asked me to write, write one article, one article uh, about the show. They gave me a screener, so I, I wrote that one article. That one article they loved so much it became all ten episodes, and I thought, boy, that was just really yeah cathartic for me <clears throat> to write this because people said. <clears throat> Hey, he's not the dumb surfer. This guy is sort of kind of funny. And I thought it was a cervic, the kind of writing I did. And even by the third episode, I saw that in the show that this didn't even happen because they kept putting the Kardashians in. But FX isn't stupid. They know they've got a high yeah. uh, Q rating of everybody who knows them on Twitter. They want to get it up there. And I, I just said on my third article, they kept putting me in. I said, there's too much Cato even for Cato. <laughs> So, wow, Kato, that's the first time you've ever said that, and I bet you haven't yeah. said it since then. I have. All right, there's Mark never Kato. enough Kato, especially when it comes to this podcast. By the way, if you if you just uh, stumbled on this, or, or hopefully you you've heard about this, but make sure you subscribe, write a review. We're going to be here every single week. We're going to start with one episode per week, but we're growing. We want to turn this into one of the biggest podcasts in the country. Yeah, I'm very very open about my goals and my plans for this, and I think we can do it. I, I, I'm the kind of guy that doesn't say to people, you know, hey, check out our link, subscribe. But I'm saying it because it's really going to be worth it. Because I've never have been that. I, you know, if people want to find it, you'll find it. But this is, yeah. I, this is my first time with the podcast, uh, working with you, Tom, and it's, I just think this is a, a grand slam, yeah. not a you home know, run. I, I think it's going to be a grand slam. The, the first time we talked about this was literally before the pandemic. Um, and I thought, I just always knew that you, this is the perfect venue for you. This is the perfect place for you, a podcast, mm -hmm. because you're unhinged moments are the best, right? And that's what a podcast is. But you have so much more to offer. Even though you've done probably dozens of hours of interviews yeah. on network television. By the way, who was your favorite interviewer? Larry loved you. Larry King loved you. Diane Sawyer, Barbara Walters. You had everybody. I, yeah, I would. I had a relationship sort of with Larry after the... Uh, um, if I did at least seven. I don't know how many because... I mean, he loved Larry, you. He we, said on the air, I love you, Cato. I saw it. You know, I, I went to his uh, uh, parties all the time. He invited mm -hmm. me. So I went to his... I would say at least 20 different parties with him and movie screenings. Uh, his wife was in a film and I got that. As a matter of fact, Larry King, Tom, people out there, Larry King was the first person I ever offered. I still have the house guest key. I still have the house guest key. And I offered it to Larry and Larry said, no, I, no, I don't want that key. Time out. You, were, you offered to give it to him or I show it on a show? I, no, I offered it. I said, Larry, I got a house, house guest. You know, I have it here too. I could uh, show you later. As a matter of fact, I have an idea later. I'm okay. going to tell you all about that. Okay, so this. you actually have the key yeah. to the guest house behind the main house on yeah. Rockingham. Unbelievable. I, I do. I still have that key. This is a big-time show. We even have a producer named Zach. Now, Zach, I don't know if we're supposed to be seeing ourselves because I have a great hair day. Is it? Is it uh, should we <laughs> Can you switch it, Zach, so we're uh, not just looking at the logo? And I, uh, I, I just see uh, – I'm going to see what I look like uh, because it doesn't matter. I think I look probably pretty good <laughs> with the camera. I can vouch for it. Okay. I can definitely vouch it for does, it. It does, but it's going. We're on. This is – it's happening. Yeah, all good. There we go. Oh my, looking good. I don't want to be slouching too much. I want to be sitting up. A I little like bit. that. I brought a brand new coat yeah. for the show. <clears throat> yeah. Hey, you know what? Have there been moments where you say, "I wish there was a statue of limitations on your involvement with it," or does it lead to positive opportunities that maybe outweigh anything negative that might be associated with it? I, you know what? There's no statue of limitations on it, only because, uh, like I mentioned, when you when there's a major event, crime go, going on, I get a call and I get back out there. I uh, believe that today you mentioned to me that even TMZ. Z on their podcast was mentioning twice it. twice they mentioned it and and i'm not aware of it being, i hear yeah. from you but i hear other people say hey you were just in this was, and you're in that i was driving and, here and i texted kato on my way i probably shouldn't have done that but i did uh i was listening to one of the tmz podcasts and they were literally talking about you they mentioned you twice because whenever a scandal comes up or anything related to oj your name always pops up part of it is because of an unforgettable name your middle name kato right yep 
Unbelievable. Did you ever, th your mom ever think it would lead to this? You no, know, I, I don't think so. I, I, you know what? It, it was devastating to mom during the trial. She had passed away, but during that time, it was phone calls, crying. And at the time, there were other shows like Hard Copy and Current Affair. I said, Mom, don't watch the show tonight. And of course, that meant that she was going to watch the show. Right. So, yeah. But how could you not? I mean, it's your yeah. son, number one. Yeah. And, and, and it's probably her only way I mean, to communicate with you. You were so uh, busy at the Tom, time. It's a double edged sword. Like, there's a really great things that happened. Something were bad because in yeah. Hollywood, let's face it, I, I got fame the wrong way. It was famous from a trial, although I've had my Screen Actors Guild card for over, my God, 40 years. So I've been around for a while, but now everybody recognized me yeah. and they hated it that I became famous. Some, not all, but lots <clears throat> of people hated yeah. it for becoming famous for, through a tragedy. And I'm aware of it. Yeah. I know I'm famous through that. I never denied that. Yeah. I just said, uh, you know, there's 200 witnesses for some reason that I stood out and you know, I, I kind of have to grab my blueprint of life. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. So yeah. I still, to this day, I'm here with you. And the McDonald's is still there that you and OJ went to, right? Isn't yeah. that like 26 in Santa Monica? I, you know, I, it is. Right I, I've there. never been there in my entire life because McDonald's is not a place I actually right. eat at. That wasn't, he just drove there. I didn't know where we were going to McDonald's. So yeah. that was the, uh, another thing. And then when I, uh, I, I think um, people quote a lot of my testimony of, the humor that they'll never forget. They'll say when you said, uh, wouldn't you? And I'm like, what, what is that? Okay, I get it. Now it was that reference to, um, about, I think it was about, uh, was uh, OJ excited to see you? And I said, well, wouldn't you? And Marsha <laughs> Clark. And it was, you know, sort of a uh, thing where. But your true personality did come out. And, and I that's think that's what endeared you to everybody. That's right. Because in that most stressful times, you brought some levity, right? And the whole world was watching this. It was so tense. And everybody was so locked in and glued to it. We'll never see anything like it. There's never been anything like yeah. it. Nothing can approach it in the history of this planet. Never will. Well, this is a great segue, I think, because I know, I, I don't know about you, but I've been on my Instagram with the Johnny Depp trial. I got calls to do the Johnny Depp and yeah. Amber Heard trial. So I'm on Instagram, Cato underscore Kaylin. I've been doing day one, who wore it better? And I did it sort of a humorous way. Uh, because I think the trial is somewhat humorous of what's going on, of all the things that, that went on, you know. Um, and I was, when you called and told me that we had someone from People Magazine, who I've done c many interviews <laughs> with Count. Matter of fact, I was one of the 50, 50 most interesting people in 1995. I still have that cover. No kidding. Yeah. Congrats. So, <laughs> yeah, a long time ago. Let's get you on again through yeah. this podcast. Let's make it happen. Let's, let's do it. Okay, so the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. It's the biggest one there's been in a long time. Yeah. I mean, this is a big celebrity trial. Now, it's not happening in L.A., and I think that makes a huge difference. The right. fact that it's going on in the D.C. area, it's not as big, but it's big, right? I mean, it is what everybody's talking about, and these two characters give us something to talk about. We're taping this a little bit before the verdict, so we won't really discuss that, yeah. but I think there's so much behind-the-scenes stuff that probably you can relate to more than anybody, um, and just the, the fans that have come out and, and just the sides that have been chosen. By the way, Cato, this thing... I mean, this, there's no murder at stake here. This yeah. is this is a different type of trial. But do you even know who sued who? Do you remember? Do you care? I yeah, I do. I've been kind of following it. But but you bring up the point of uh, um, I remember during the OJ trial, the fans in the 405. It was it you couldn't. It was boy. I'm trying to. It was beyond the Beatles if they're in their fame. It was the 405 closed down. The, it was a car chase. There was the elements of that. I think the Depp trial, like you said, it's in Fairfax, Virginia. Yeah. It doesn't have the same, but there are fans flying out. There's people that are diehard Johnny Depp fans. There are people that like Amber Heard, but she doesn't. I think in the court of public opinion now, uh, I was uh, guilty in the court of public opinion of who I was, and you can't beat that. She's guilty, I think, of, in the court of public opinion. They made up their Without mind. Without a doubt. So it's sort of, yeah, I, uh, I'll bring an article one day that I, I wrote for LA Times of uh, what it's like, how you can't defend yourself because uh, the decision has been made up by the public. And um, uh, I, I remember people with T-shirts of Cato's back when I had to testify again and all these uh, different merchandise yeah. that was coming out. The difference is she's, she's an actress, number one, yeah. and, and she has something at stake here, right? So you never know when she's testifying, is she acting? Did this really happen? And she's not as likable, right? The difference with you is you were, you were sincere, you were yourself, yeah. you know, and people found that very, very endearing. So, um, and, and I didn't know what was, I didn't, I think she knows because there's been so many trials before she knows how to play a camera. I mean, they both do, but I think there's the first of its kind sort of was OJ on TV and it was everywhere. So I think, um, is she acting? I is it my personal yeah. opinion? I, I, I did you see Aquaman? <laughs> no, she wasn't acting there. It was not too not, good. Not not impressed that the film. What, what do you think? No. Where do you think their careers go from here, regardless of the verdict? You think they're doing big movies again? 
I think it's going to take a, quite a while. I, I think they're, I think it's a career death. You know what I think? Here's a weird prediction. I'll give you a few throughout the yeah. history of the show. Amber Heard, talk show. I think she should host a talk show. I don't. Th I, th I think she'll be a little toxic on, on uh, doing movies and in Hollywood. There's not that many good talk show hosts. I'm not saying she would be, yeah. but wouldn't you get some eyeballs, especially with Ellen leaving? I don't, and I don't I'd give her a chance. So. I don't for think a she year. has a big enough following, honestly. My my opinion. I don't think, and I I don't think I would tune in to. I don't think I would either. I think it comes down to what does America think of her testimony? Do they have sympathy for her? Mm -hmm. Does she feel? Do they feel she was a victim, or is yeah. she? You know, trying to expose Johnny, make some money on this thing. and I, I think we hear so much on the positive depth side. I'm sure there's positive Amber Heard side, too. I, I'm not aware of it, but I think, because <laughs> I, I, I haven't heard it. I, look, I, I, I couldn't tell you one thing she's been in. I, yeah. I mean, I haven't looked at her IMDb page lately, but I, I didn't even know she was an actress, to be honest with you. you I mean, I, I, I did, but she's not relevant. I don't oh, yeah. watch superhero movies. She's actually great in a film that's called The Stepfather, a remake. Of the movie called The Stepfather. Oh yeah, yeah. I so guess. she's gone downhill with her performances. Uh, yeah, I, I think <laughs> a little bit. I, and you know, I was thrown for a curve, and I'm from Wisconsin. When I heard that she was divorced from her wife, and I, wow. wait, I didn't know yeah. she had a wife, and I'm like, what? She had a wife? So, so Cato, you know, there's been so many stories written about this one. I think one of the most interesting stories I've seen in the what six weeks of this trial was People Magazine did a did a piece probably about a, a month ago, and everybody yeah. picked it up. The New York Post. Right. I mean, just everybody picked it up. But the writer's name is Nick Bollacy. I know Nick. <clears throat> All right, we're going to talk to yeah. him in just a second. And he's a freelance writer, uh, entertainment reporter, covered the trial. But the, the, the interesting thing about this was the level to which some of Johnny Depp's fans go. And to, to support him, uh, to be there for him. This is what I was saying to you earlier. It's amazing that they really don't know Johnny Depp. They know Johnny Depp's characters. They're in love with that. And I, I think, I, let's Nick tell us if I'm right with that. Nick, looking good, man. Looking very Hollywood. After you, the hey. big story in People Magazine. I know you're, you know, do a lot of political reporting on the East Coast as well, but I, did you, whoa, what's the circus like? You're out there in, in Fairfax, Virginia. We're not. We know if, if this was in Hollywood, it'd be a totally different story, but has it, has it, like sucked up the atmosphere out there in a, in a very political driven atmosphere? It really has. It's gotten so much attention. Uh, it's right in my backyard. So I had to go over and uh, see what was going on. And I got to tell you, I mean, it is wild. If you want to get into the actual courtroom, I mean, you've got to be there at this point in the trial. I've heard of people getting there at 9 p.m., the night before, people are sleeping in their cars to get one of those coveted 100 wristbands to get inside the courtroom. If you're past that 100 mark, you can get in and you can go into an overflow room. But they've got the press mixed with the public and everybody's fighting to get a spot. But there's just as much action outside the courtroom as there is inside, yeah. I've got yeah. to say. The wristband is sort of like, I guess they think they're going to the Stones concert backstage <laughs> with Depp. Say, so, Nick, yeah, you already said it's in your backyard. It's got to be interesting that like people going to lunch or at dinners, I don't know if uh, Depp and that, if they, if they stay, obviously they stay overnight when it's Monday through Thursday. If they go, if people think they're going to spot them out at a lunch or dinner spot, Amber Heard. And uh, I, have you noticed any of that happening? I haven't actually heard of many Depp sightings other than, the people who line up for blocks outside uh, to see his vehicle, you know, coming out of the back exit and see him waving. And if you're lucky enough, you can catch him at a stoplight and he might roll down the window and, uh, you know, talk to you. Actually, yeah. I saw a <laughs> clip. You guys probably saw it of him doing a Jack Sparrow impression uh, from the car uh, for fans who were standing on the sidewalk. Um, so those are the sightings that people keep posting about That's on correct. social media. The legal team has been spotted uh, out and about around town. Oh, sure. You know, they're, they're trying to hit the hot spots in D.C., get some attention. They're thinking about their next case. They want to get hired. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Win or lose, they're, they're probably both going to be in high, high demand. All right. So, Nick, first time having a conversation with Cato? Yeah, first you? time. All right. The K train has left the I, building. I have. You know, what, what interests me also is how they, uh, uh, not yourself, but I, I've read reports where people are starting to plant the seed that Depp is seeing his lawyer 
uh, I think, uh, is it Carmine? Uh, is uh, it, uh, Camilla? I'm, Cam- yeah. I, uh, is, did you, what do you think? Have you seen them in courtroom? Is there that energy? I think there is an energy. I don't know if they're dating or they will be dating, but obviously after day after day of spending so much time, you know, I know what it was like to sit in a deposition, although I didn't hit on my lawyer that he was a dude, but I didn't hit on him, but it was, uh, it could happen. I don't know. There, there seems like there's an energy, a chemistry between them. You know, it's all over the internet. Everybody's speculating that if you've been following the trial or you're a fan of Johnny Depp, it seems that there are a lot of fans who think that it's that's what's going on and that they'd be a great couple. But there's some people very passionate about how, you know, that goes too far. You got to focus on the trial. You shouldn't be getting into that. But you can't help but notice all that uh, speculation online. Uh, so the, t- the few times that I've been able to uh, video uh, outside or see her coming in, uh, uh, Camille, I've tried asking her about it. But she she's very tight lipped. <laughs> sure. Don't you think though, when someone has the charisma of a Johnny Depp, he knows how to cast a spell on somebody. Maybe he's doing that just to make her work even harder, right? Or fall well, in love with him for a I, month. I think. Well, my opinion is this: Johnny Depp should date her because he needs not. A, he doesn't want an actress. The actress because there's too many times out of work. Uh, you know, idle time is the devil's handiwork, and it's he needs someone that's always busy, and he's got to compete it for. And for I think she's Clooney, the perfect right? one. There you go. Boom. He is so into scandals, this guy. <laughs> hey, Nick. Okay, so the story that caught my eye that you wrote for People, and Cato, this is unbelievable. He covered some of the super fans of yeah. Johnny Depp. And, and these fans are flying from L.A. on a weekly basis, spending upwards of, what, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 on lodging and airfare and everything. How would you find these people? And what, what are, these, are they nuts? Are these people crazy? Or what, what did you learn about them when you talked to them? You know, just talking to some people outside of the courthouse who go inside and actually go in to see the proceedings, I was able to find out that some were there every day. Now, this started April 11. They've been there every day. I talked to one. Her name's Yvonne. She said she took her entire year's vacation from her job. So she, yeah, in L.A. She, she lives in LA. L.A. So she could yeah. be there to support Johnny. She's been a fan for 36 years. And I said, well, what does your family think of this? And she's wow. like, well, you know, I'm single, so I can I can do this. You know, I, I don't have to worry about kids or whatever. But she did say she spent thirty thousand dollars. Well, I, 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 <laughs> I, I, that I, was four I, weeks ago. She I, spent more. I, I dropped my opinion about Depp and Camille. He should be getting with Yvonne. <laughs> he just, he's got money and, and lots of uh, freaking flower miles. Yeah, uh, it's a uh, uh, it, it really it, like I said, it's so amazing. And I think uh, you, you know you did the article about the people that are super fans, and and, and believe me, I'm not uh, a Depper, and I, I I make fun of myself of saying celebrity during the trial, but. I, it's amazing because I was invited myself to every major event to be seen from the Indy 500 to the Kentucky Derby. Would they pay you? Trip. Would they fly you out? Uh, yeah, they would They would pay and fly certain things uh, to go to. And um, But I, I remember what it was like, and I was single, but I remember how many times, and, and by the way, I'm not saying this to be uh, uh, big-headed and conceited, but women would come up and say, sign my breast, like a, a rock star, which I didn't do. But it's it's honestly, some people go beyond and it's like wow this is yeah. and they think they know you but they only know you because they saw you on tv they don't really know a person so and, and by the way, i'm not making fun of fans if they love his films but they really don't know the person well you two and just to carry on this you two have been in the courtroom with these larger than life figures you were there you saw probably how oj had an effect on everybody inside that trial at yeah. least the jury nick did you feel that was the jury like reacting to Johnny Depp? Where did he have him in the palm of his hand? Did he cast a spell on him? You know, depending on where you're sitting in the room, it's hard to see exactly the you know see the area where the jurors are sitting and see their actual facial reactions. Just the way you're uh, positioned, I did get a glimpse though at the jury and got to see um, who they were and kind of what the makeup was. Um, didn't see too much of a reaction. Everybody seemed to be pretty serious and focused. No one throwing their panties at him in the middle That's of the it. trial? Besides the judge. Besides <laughs> and the pretty, judge. And the lawyer. They're strict in there with the, uh, just the logistics up to this point in terms of security. I saw right. one person uh, get escorted out for trying to take a photo in line 
waiting to get into the actual courtroom. This is a person who had a wristband. And oh, he's going to get go a book You know, so, yeah, you know, speaking of logistics, I think it's really important that Depp is sitting closest to the jury. I think it's very ad- advantageous for him. But And I also noticed, um, and Nick, you were there, day one, I think day one and two, his hair was not in that ponytail, and it was sort of wild. It, it looked like he was renting my hair from the 90s. And, uh, but I noticed that, and I guarantee you, the lawyers, they, they go and they talk and say, hey, listen, image is very important how the jury will look at you. Let's, let's clean up a little bit. Let's uh, comb it. Uh, don't do the wild. Do the ponytail. So I've noticed that. I'd say out of the 24 days, I think like 22, <clears throat> 21 of them have been the ponytail. Yeah. And and the gla- the blue glasses. I don't like the ponytail look. I don't either. I thought he should have cut his hair. To be honest with you, but that's another show. What do you what? think? You know, I haven't. <laughs> in the beginning, you got a hair I opinion wasn't in person there in the courtroom in the beginning. But I did notice though, as things went on, you know, if you were to tune in the last couple of days, his reactions you saw a lot more from him, and you would actually see him frequently kind of looking over at her in her direction, but she really. I mean, this was this was just the last couple of days. Before that, he really was pretty focused. I don't think he really looked around at all. He was pretty, you know, uh, serious yeah, and looking see, forward. Look she looks him. more at him, I think, from what I've seen. Amber Heard. Yeah. You, you yeah. know, for those groupies that you you interviewed and you fe- featured in that People magazine story, do they have a rivalry amongst themselves? Do they get along? Do, do they, they have so much in common they're willing to spend tens of thousands of dollars to, to support Johnny Depp yeah. when he probably doesn't give a damn or doesn't even know? Does he know they're in there, the super fans? I think so, because when he, the times I've seen him come out, you know, the back exit driving around, he's yelling or waving or whatever, and everyone's yelling in his direction. I think he's got to see, you know, face, similar faces. I mean, the same people who, like I, the ones I talk to who've come there every single day. Uh, but from the ones, yeah. the, the group of people I talked to for the story, uh, there were uh, people who didn't even know each other before the trial. And now that they've been there so much together, they're friendly yeah. and they're in like their own little cliques. And I actually talked to uh, one there... woman who's from England who met lifelong friends, she said, at the trial. She spent a lot of money, over $10,000, because she Jeez. flies back and forth either to England or to uh, other states to visit friends within the U.S. This... But she said she left a 12-year relationship <clears throat> and literally put her things in storage and said, you know what, I like, I love Johnny Depp. I'm going to the trial. And she's never come back. I love she's it. She's been in the U.S. I since. Love... You know, does, we're, I was wondering if Amber Heard has anybody that's uh, rooting for her. Are there any guys out there like, Amber, you can shit in my bed. Uh, signs, anything like that. Where, you know, hey, Amber, uh, 21 Dump Street. Amber, I love you. Amber, if not, I'm going there right now. I, hey, Nick, come on. I'm, I'm going to get a sign, baby. Amber, I'm over here. It's Kato. You know, I have to say, from my, my observations are a lot more depth people i mean i i didn't yeah well, no doubt i haven't seen really anybody i think if you're an amber heard you're there to support her and you're a fan of her you're probably pretty quiet because you're totally outnumbered yeah you're just, on the payroll of her yeah it's like uh maybe maybe some you know mrs paul's yeah. fish sticks or something from aquaman because i saw the movie and i was just telling tom i it, it was not that sorry amber it was not good acting in that film aquaman and we we've heard that yeah. film come up a lot right throughout the whole Wow, so yeah, and I, 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 I'm, I'm amazed. I don't know this. I, uh, you know, I know you do political reporting also, and and scandal and entertainment. Nick, I'm wondering of all the things that are going on from the James Franco, uh, the um, Elon Musk, if there's possible lawsuits happening with that. I know that they're considered public figures, but these are, they're making accusations, and I, are they true or not? And I think. When that stuff happens in the trial, I think more people are watching because now they're dropping names. And, Tom, it's one degree of scandalous there. Yeah. And there's so much more to that story now, like um, uh, you know, with James Franco. And I think James Franco was in the news recently with um, – Yeah, he was. He has a trial that went on. I, I don't remember, remember. But it's like – Everything is this one degree, and that's it's like, what is this thing? Elon Musk well, did sure. it? Well, sure, and then the spotlight is just that much brighter when it's this trial, right? If this came up in some other little 
you know, civil trial that was going on in Atlanta or Seattle or something, but the Johnny Depp trial, everything's going to get magnified. You know, Nick, real quickly, you talked about, well, by the way, you know, these, these groupies, these super fans yeah. from LA that go to back and forth to DC, you know what? It's probably a smart move because they could either spend $10,000 doing that or on a couple tanks of gas here in LA, <laughs> yeah. right? Just go out there and cheer on their big boy. But what's going on in line? Do you see anything crazy? Are they exchanging sexual favors Are ex- for the, for the risk? Yeah, for the wristbands, are they exchanging money? Will they do anything to try to get into that courtroom? Well, when I was there, I can tell you that one thing I saw was, was arguments. If you tried cutting the line or they, or they think you cut the line, they'd freak out. Even if there's no security there from, you know, the, the courthouse, no sheriffs, no courthouse employees. I'm talking like 5 a.m. You know, if you try to go in there, and I have actually have some friends who have gone in there as well into the actual courtroom and went in line and they told me, look, you cannot try at all to cut or save a spot, you know, for somebody else who's going to come later. Forget it. There's like self-appointed Johnny Depp, you know, fans who made themselves the organizers and they're like, wait, you weren't here before. Get out of line kind of thing. So that's right. That's really uh, some of the crazy things going on in terms it's, of the line and the, the, how they're determining who gets those hundred spots and people counting it's, it's, <laughs> to make sure it's a hundred and they're the people that get it. It's wild. Well, I mean, if you're going to invest that much, especially time, yeah. you know, you want to make sure it's fair. You don't cut in line or I'll cut your finger off. I think we stay with that theme. We go <laughs> Another T-shirt. I, yeah, you don't cut my finger off, please, Amber. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that. It's like a Bank of America on a Friday at 3. <laughs> That's basically what it is. <laughs> you need wristbands there. I, I, I think the fascination is um, <laughs> Nick saying, I mean, I, I, there's got to be. It would be great to watch these f- super fans fight. To do something with this because uh, they are so, they hundred people get in right hundred people hundred people get yeah. in. I think Tom, it's Tom, it's great. I would say I, this, the wristband's got to be something you could sell. Oh yeah, and, and like you said, for value, sex, right? it's like mm-hmm. yeah, not a Barter. bad deal, yeah. not a bad deal. We missing anything else? Anything else crazy that you haven't told us? You know, I would just say there's a lot of energy too around uh, Camille, the the lawyer. I think she gets a rock star treatment. I think that she's got like. Uh, last time I was over there at the end, I could see like a police escort bringing her out and people screaming. I mean, she, who knows what if book deal or something she's going to get after the trial. Cause her profile is really raised. Yeah. And I think a book deal happened for one person, at least in the jury, if not an HBO max special of something of uh, what it was like to be in there. I mean, there's so much things that can be written that you could see where, where it will go. And I think the Depp uh, and Heard might be an actual TV movie with two other people playing Don't you think them. That, that, that's a lifetime it's, movie or something? Yeah. For sure. And you know what? You got you to act quick if you're on that jury. You got to go grab the money when you can. Well, Because it, the third one's not going to get it, right? Well, go be the first yeah. one that's telling that story. Well, now that you told me it's not sequestered, I'm sure there's a deal already made. Yeah, can you believe that, that they're not sequestered? They're watching all the media coverage that they want. Even though the, the judge always, at the end of the, it says, of the day, please don't go on the internet, please... I thought that meant you're sequestered. Well, even if you don't want to, you're still going to be, you know, submerged in it. It's everywhere, right? Little feeds on your phone. You listen to the radio, you're going to hear little updates. So there's yeah. no way they can get away with it. Are you going to try to, uh, are you going back at all? Well, they're, are you done? the jury's deliberating right now. So it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out, right? Because when they reach the verdict and then they're going to read the verdict, I was I looked online and saw I don't think that wristband thing is in effect anymore because the judge is now, you know, going to have other cases and other things to work on. So I think they're just going to when the verdict is reached, they're going to read it. I don't know if they're going to announce ahead of time, you know, that, hey, come to the courthouse, the verdict being read or it's just going to leak. It might just leak in the media. You know, somebody's going to get a breaking news alert out that says jury has reached. A decision and, and everybody will rush to the courthouse i guess we'll We'll see. Good. You rush. We'll watch for you. Okay. I, and one last thing, I say, Tom and I already are selling fake wristbands. <laughs> uh, dating there, I'm making hundred bucks. And uh, I, I know it's not even part of it, but let me ask a question, whether you use or not. But what is your opinion of? Um, uh, because we're not really do- talking verdict, we're seeing what's going on. Uh, I think their careers will be over for a while, and I also think um, um, if there was a decision made, where do you see it leaning towards? And will you think any payout will happen or yeah. bankruptcies? Well, you know. 
what's interesting, you guys have seen the live feed of the courtroom. You know, the judge will say, you know, don't discuss this case. Don't read public opinion about it, et cetera, et cetera. But, I mean, the public opinion seems to be on Johnny Depp's side from what I've seen on social media. 95%. Right? Yeah, 100%. So, but then yeah. again... And you, you then you got to figure out how's that going to sway the jury one way or another. They're going to feel sorry for her exactly. or not. Yeah, yeah. Is she a compelling victim? You know, that's the story. And Jerry Bruckheimer, by the way, already said Depp will not be uh, in uh, right. uh, in Pirates, Pirates Six. Yeah. Uh, there is a no Jack Sparrow. Yeah, he hated the ponytail and, too. Oh, he did say. That. I don't know. It's a tough position to <laughs> no, be I, I, in if you're on the jury, right? Because they're both actors. I mean, they're putting on. Yeah, they're, that's what they do for a living. So, who's telling the truth? I mean, we'll, I, uh, yeah. we got to see uh, how this goes. I mean, I, it's anybody's guess at this point. And, and his name is Johnny Depp, as in deposition. Coincidence, <laughs> Nick? Maybe. Uh, maybe. maybe. <laughs> Depp position. <laughs> hey, Nick, we're going to talk to you again when Cato's up in the for Sexiest Man Alive for people. There you okay? go. All right. That sounds good. Put Thank him you. in your word. Well, I, I think I've got a, a running now with Nick in that Hugo Boss coat of his. I thought, <laughs> Look I at Sharp, man. I thought that was Daniel Craig. <laughs> Looking good. Thanks, hey, guys. Nick, thanks so much. All right, and, and we'll watch for your work again, but maybe we'll talk to you down the road, too. Uh, okay? Absolutely. Thanks, thanks, Nick. Thanks for having me on. You really got it. You're fantastic. You. It's so, it's good. I, I love getting the inside. I love getting the inside <laughs> because it's when you're inside – the courtroom and you're he's seeing everybody he can you can yeah. feel the reactions you can feel you know like i oj was waving to the jury do you know that he was waving to the jury like They're good morning waving. hello yeah, yeah and they were and i'd look at him going they love him yeah they love this guy and uh and clearly they did here's the crazy thing the, the oj trial lasted what nine months right the, yeah, the criminal case i think nine, at least a, a nine month trial they, they came up with a verdict in two hours, yeah. right? I mean, they had their mind made up. It'll be interesting to see how long it takes for this Depp trial, which lasted about six weeks, to see how long they deliberate before they come up with a verdict. By the way, hearing all this stuff about the, way, the marriage of Amber and Johnny Depp, you just got married last week. It's not freaking you out or anything, is it? We are. We're the... Uh, uh Sheng Yi is from Beijing, China. We are basically uh, Lucy and Ricky Ricardo, but we're the Chinese version and English version. Uh, every, day is, every day is sort of a... You're one week into it. Word is that? Ladies one week. and gentlemen, Cato got married last Saturday. Yeah. Like, literally. So, congratulations. It was an incredible wedding. Your bride is amazing. She's beautiful. She's so charismatic. The, her speech, her ability to handle the mic on par with a superstar like you, she handled the moment brilliantly. Oh, yeah. And it was just so much fun. I thought the wedding just <laughs> captured you guys perfectly. Right? Hey. Loving, fun, spontaneous, crazy. Love and laughter. That's how yeah. seriously we live by it. When she, I didn't know her speech. She was just, she kind of winged it. But she, when I, I, I looked it over a few times when she said, he makes me laugh every day. I mean, loud, <laughs> loud. And I was like, my heart melted. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was really, when it, it also made me feel like, wow, this girl's in love with me, really? You did it. Congratulations. Nice. So get everybody caught up with what the last quarter century has been like for you. Because been, people see you, they pop, you pop up. You're in the news all, all frequently, but what, what's what been driving you the last you know quarter century? I know you've been touring with Comic-Con yeah. and hosting and doing comedy and everything. I've been doing a, a Wizard World for the last four years. Wizard World's the world's largest, was the world's largest uh, traveling Comic-Con, a thing called COVID hit, and it sort of knocked that to the ground, and that is uh, uh, currently being sold. Uh, but recently, the most exciting thing, besides one degree of scandalous, is I'm uh, producing. This is... Incredible. We'll, I would love to show a clip. Maybe we'll show one later. It's called Ice Wars. Ice Wars is the brainchild of a gentleman, a friend of mine for many, many years named Charlie Nama. He played uh, professional hockey. And he, we noticed that he noticed that lots of the fights in the NHL were no longer going on. The NHL was tr trying to get away from fights. But let's face it. I've been to hockey games. When a yeah. fight gets up, everybody stands up and they watch the fight. We now have actual fights on ice yeah i know three rounds it's incredible one minute rounds <clears throat> and the we've got the publicity from barstool sports pat mcafee yeah. usa today they say this is the greatest thing they've ever seen so i'm on the the ground floor and yeah. it can only get bigger and it's the most exciting thing that's going on it's ice wars so it, it made its debut the same night as your wedding yeah amazingly it, I, what a, was that a coincidence no it wasn't a coincidence okay. we, we uh, got that date and the the worst thing about the date it did well but ottawa uh montreal 
um, and um, Toronto, 70% of our audience was knocked out with this gigantic storm. Still, uh, over, I think they said 1,000 electric poles were knocked out. Still don't have all the power up today, a week later. And it had to be the day, because that's where a big your fan base yeah. is going to be, right? Those are hockey fans. But I've seen the clips, Cato. Congratulations. I know this is going to be a big hit. Ice Wars. I mean, they're coming out there in full hockey gear with MMA gloves, right? Yeah. What, six MMA gloves? gloves. Yep. And, and the, the reality hits these guys that they're on ice after a couple roundhouses, right? Because then they got to think about their balance. But these Ex are big dudes, 6'5", 240. Tom, they're gigantic. We had one guy 6'8", 340. Yeah. He made it to the finals, and he, he lost to a guy that was much uh, – shorter but this guy was a pit bull and just bruising he you knocked him out you need to talk to gary bettman or the nhl they should take fighting out of the nhl settle the score on ice wars right they just send them over to you maybe we're, after the game and you guys can can do it in the back parking lot well i'm glad you said that because we're going to settle scores not just with ice skaters with people amber heard johnny depp quite a possibility <laughs> yeah. but we are we're, we're going to branch out to everything because we already we've got people that are just loving this show uh, from all facets, not just from NHL, but we have people from actors. We have um, uh, football players that are loving it. Boxers. It's prize fighting on ice. Yeah. Now, it's great. Check it out. Yep. Ice Wars. And Kate will keep you updated when the next one is is going to be airing. But two big shows for you. This one launches. That one just launched. Hey, if you're catching this for the first time, make sure you subscribe. We want to get you every single week. New shows on Wednesday, wherever you get yeah. your podcast. And on YouTube. Check us out on YouTube as well. We're going to build this into a monster. Real quickly, Kate. And Podcast we're... One. Podcast One. Podcast and, and, One, of course. And, and, and subscribe to Apple. I'm doing it because this is, you know exactly what to do. I want to say it to my fans, really subscribe. Check out the link. We're, we're showing a graphic, I hope. But... It's going to be worth it, and the stories will be very inside. Yeah. You'll love it. Yep, and and let's we're going to end the show with just a couple more things from the trial. Cato, why, and talking to Nick, too, you, you get a little taste of what's going on with that jury. How much were you coached by the prosecution, right? I mean, their job I, was to get you prepared. You were a witness for Marsha Clark, for, the was, for Darden. I was a witness for the prosecution. I didn't even know what the word hostile witness meant. I went in there as much as they wanted to see me. I would say we had over... 20 to 24 hours throughout the whole time of me sitting down with her. Uh, my uh, attorney at the time was Bill Janega, who passed away. Just an, one of the most intelligent people and uh, humble people in the world. And he just said, speak to both sides. So I spoke to the defense and I spoke to the prosecution, but I was a prosecution witness. Yeah. Was you was it an out of body experience for you, or did you get more comfortable and become reality? No, maybe the third or fourth day. I hate it. People don't realize I was down at the courthouse for at least three weeks waiting for my turn, and things would always happen, and you were postponed. I stayed in a room the size of a closet waiting for this, and there's no air. Anything. Were you just, watching a closer no, feed of it? So watch they just made sure you were cut off from everything. They don't cut want off. any I, influence on you. I was one hundred percent sequestered. I did not watch huh. anything. What'd you do? Twiddle your thumbs? Yeah, twiddle my play, thumbs. Play Tentra on your phone or something? That's it. Took a lot of walks. I used to run marathons. And that was, uh, now I don't anymore, but I, I used to run 15 miles easily every day. It was, uh, it was for my mind, and it was great. But I just checked my pocket, and mm -hmm. I found something. I found a key. So that's but it? That's the key, and I, I, we're not going to do anything, but... I, I, we have to think of something what yeah. to do with this. Let me see that. So that's the actual key to the guest house at Rockingham. Yeah, that's this it. is unbelievable. Piece of... American history right here. I mean, without a doubt. That's unbelievable. More to come from this key coming up on one degree of scandalous. Yeah. Did you did you have any animosity towards the lawyers that were asking you questions? Did did you feel they were fair with you? Did it get personal at all? I it you know what I, I think back and I just remember one time I, I was in the room with Marsha Clark and said, When this is over, we'll we'll grab a lunch. And then when she turned on me somewhat, I thought like, Well, there goes lunch and if we do go, you're buying. It was uh, it was <laughs> right. it was did I, I didn't feel that way. I, yeah. I felt like it was my uh, civic duty to sure. go and put, talk both sides. I'll tell you one thing. I was completely honest. Mm -hmm. and, I, I, and people say, you look like a deer in the headlights. I was a deer in the headlights because I wanted to make sure I answered the question correctly. And if it wasn't in my review, I said, gosh, I don't remember that being part of the review. So I wanted to make absolutely right. sure that I, I answered uh, truthfully. And I think what people don't know or, or fail to connect with you and everything going on at the time was you were close friends with Nicole. Yeah. So there's, there was a very personal side of this too that had to just be so conflicting being in there and so crazy for you. Yeah, and I, I didn't know Ron, but he'd see, I, I did become uh, somewhat friends with Kim Goldman and uh, uh, Fred Goldman. I actually sat with uh, Kim on her show. So, um, and I know from her and I just knowing that Ron uh, was a, a great brother to her. And yeah. He's a terrific human being. So, um, 
Her dad, I, I mean, Ron, or, uh, his Fred dad, Gold, Fred Goldman, yeah. worked at Nordstrom's in Scottsdale. He sold suits. I mean, he left L.A. to try to get away from this. You don't, yeah. How can you blame him? And we, Shonda and I, would go to Scottsdale and go to Nordstrom's frequently because we lived in Phoenix for a while. And you would just see him. And my heart broke every time yeah. I saw him because you could still, like, palpably feel the pain. And, you know, no matter what he tried to do to escape from, I mean, he's got a recognizable face, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, with the mustache and everything. You're Rolly always going to know who he he's is. Very much really. Yeah. And it's just, it's just so heartbreaking whenever you'd see him because you knew how close he was to his son and just so devastated. Every time we saw him, we'd shake his hand and, you know, yeah, support and him. I think I think when you're and also there's that camera shot. You never forget the camera shots of the verdict of showing the families of uh, just utter Goldman's disbelief. Uh, right. Utter Although they probably knew it was coming with a two hours. Uh, deliberation. I mean, that's generally the way it goes, right? Yeah. I, well, I mean, it's usually the Barbara opposite, Walters, isn't it? Actually, I mean, I was at Barbara Walters at the Century Plaza Hotel, and uh, I whispered in her ear, "I think they made a huge mistake." Yeah. So. All right. Okay. This is it. Episode number one in the can. Back here next week. I'm back, Zach. You better wake up. I'm kidding. Zach, our producer, is just uh, sitting on the edge of his seat, and it's not because of hemorrhoids. He loved the show. <laughs> really, Zach, am I right? You can shout. Woo! Uh, Tom, honestly, uh, compelling. I was, uh, God, I'm really into this. I, I can't believe that yeah. this uh, hour went by like it was 60 minutes. Yeah, hey, great job. Thank you for letting us like I bring back this party. Okay, totally very joke. good one. That's a think, good one. Okay, come on. I, okay, we, and I, go ahead. We have an editor. He can put a laugh track in here, okay? <laughs> I'm used to your humor, okay? And some of it passes by. Um, every Wednesday, new episode. YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Anywhere you get your podcast, the audio version, subscribe, give us a review. Cato's going to keep filling us with great insight and, and everything that's happened in the past. And a new scandal next week. We're leaning towards Chris Rock, potentially. Like yeah. Will Smith. So be ready for that. Follow us on social media. We'll give you previews of what's coming up. So, Cato, thank you. Thank you. And uh, also, I'd like to say, with that, maybe we should also go in best hits uh, from Chris Brown to Chris Rock to Tanya Harding. Nancy Kerrigan, the whole thing. Who hit the best? I that, mean, it's a possibility. That, that's that's a month of content right there. Great I know, idea. I know, I know that. All right, hey, thank you, everybody. We hope you're with us every single week. We're going to bring you a great show. Cato. Caitlin. Pleasure to have you here. We'll catch you next week on One Degree of Scandalous.